Hello world, Geriatric Geek here. How in the heck are you? I hope you're doing great. It's another beautiful day here in North Las Vegas. That's right. March 17th. It's St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody out there. I've got my my green t-shirt on, my Spider-Man t-shirt on. Um, you know, I'm probably 75-80% Irish, so uh, it's always been kind of a special day for our family. But, uh, hey, you guys, thanks for stopping by, and ho hopefully you're having a great day and being safe out there. So, as you can tell, yeah, as you can tell, my lighting is terrible, but I'm not in my normal filming location. Um, I'm currently in my collection room, what I call my collection room. Um, mostly pops and uh, Star Wars stuff. I do have some movies in here also. But uh, yeah, this short story. Um, the shelf that I had behind me in my normal filming location, it stands six foot tall. And uh, basically it was attached to the wall with uh, earthquake straps. And we, in the last week we've had I don't know if you guys have ever heard. Air Force has uh, once a year uh, what they call red flag, red flag exercises. Uh, by the way, I was in the Air Force, so I know all about the red flag exercises. But anyway, it's where a whole bunch of airplanes go up in the air, and uh, basically it makes quite a noise. You may even hear them today. I don't know. But anyway, let's say Saturday of last this last week. Um, an unusually loud plane was going over top of our house. And it actually shook the windows, shook the house, uh, set off car alarms in the neighborhood. This bugger was low. Ran outside to look up, C5 Galaxy, one of the uh, uh, cargo planes, was going over top. That bugger shook this house. And not only did it shake the house, but my shelf came tumbling down onto my work table and basically 350, 400 Blu-rays all around the area. So I'm still in the midst of cleaning that up and trying to come up with a solution for my uh, shelving. So until that happens, here we are. We're going to make the best of it. You know, like I said, the, the lighting is not that great. I hate seeing those rings in my eyeballs, but... Anyway, we're going to do this. I'm going to share what I've picked up from Hamilton Book and MVD here in the last little bit. Uh, Hamilton Book, of course, once a month has a uh, has new stuff on their site, and I grab a bunch of horror stuff as usual. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to share with you what I picked up, and uh, hopefully you see something you guys might like or might be interested in uh, in purchasing yourself. So here we go. Again, thank you so much for stopping by, and uh, let's try and do this as best we can. First one up, it's a documentary called Oh the Horror. Oh the Horror. It's 140 minutes long. It was made in 2017. This thing gets really good reviews. I haven't watched it yet. Um, awesome compendium of the most exciting era in film. Explore our fascination with horror and all things creepy and macabre as we dissect some of the best cult horror films ever made in this bone-chilling documentary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Featuring interviews from film producers, filmmakers, and horror writers from across the globe, including Troma, Troma's Lloyd Kaufman, Billy Bloody Bill Pone, P.J. Starks, Justin Bream, and Sean C. Phillips. Sean C. Phillips, we know as Cool Duder, evidently has a little section in this. So I'm excited to check this out. Uh, yeah. Awesome way to re relive the 80s. Back. Hope you guys can see this. Oh, look at that. Clown face there, man. 
Yeah, that one looks interesting. Can't wait to get into that and check it out and see Sean C. Phillips. Next up, we have a very interesting uh, cover. <laughs> Keep playing the game or die. College pranks. College pranks. Not rated. 100 minutes long. 2018. It gets, you know, mediocre reviews. Get dead, go viral. College students are invited to play a live action game sponsored by a website. When the game starts in the mountains of Colorado, the students discover the stakes are higher than they thought. They are playing with their lives to create the ultimate viral video. Hmm. Horror slasher meets YouTube prank show. Okay. There you go. There's the back. College pranks. College pranks. I don't know what to think about that one yet, but we'll check it out. Next up, something called a Cameron Romero film. Auteur. Auteur. 2014, 75 minutes long. It's not rated. It's comedy horror. And it's directed by uh, George Romero's son, Cameron. Has Tom Sizemore, who plays himself in this one. <laughs> that should be interesting. In this horror thriller directed by Cameron Romero and starring Tom Sizemore, a naive documentarian sets out to find a legendary horror director who mysteriously disappeared before the release of his highly anticipated masterpiece. As the filmmaker uncovers the story through various interviews, he learns that the truth is much more deadly than he ever imagined. All right. Excited to check that one out. Tom Sizemore plays himself. Next up, we've got a couple uh, William Castle double features here. Two films from The Master of Fright. These are, uh, I believe, early 60s. There's uh, Homicidal and Mr. Sardonicus on this one. Uh, hom homicidal is black and white from 1961. Gets great reviews. Gets great reviews. Let's see. In a small town of Solvang, ah, Solvang, California, there's a killer on the loose and the nurse taking care of a wheelchair-bound stroke victim has a bedside manner that is to die for. As truth is uncovered, a town's most chilling mystery will be revealed and a family's darkest secret. Mr. Sardonicus is from 1961, 90 minutes long. Desperate to retrieve a winning lottery ticket, a greedy man unearths his father's corpse. An enormous jackpot is his reward, but not without a price. His face is frozen permanently into a hideous grin. He enlists his one-eyed servant to help him lift the curse. Whoa. So there you go, little William Castle. Uh, the interesting thing about this homicidal, I understand, is they had what's called a fright break. Um, basically, it's they, he, um, William Castle called it a money-back guarantee. So some point during the film, they would break and they would say, look, if you don't like this film and you you're, don't want to see the rest of it, you can leave now and get your money back. So William Castle did that a few times in a couple of his films. So there you go. Homicidal and Mr. Sardonicus. Both of those get really good reviews. Uh, Mr. Sardonicus, as I, oh, I just remembered this. Mr. Sardonicus has a punishment uh, poll in it. In other words, they would stop and say, hey, what should be the punishment of this killer kind of thing? And the audience gets to vote. Of course, there was only one one ending but uh that was kind of the gimmick castle used at the time so i can't i can't wait to check that out 
And the second one, second double feature from William Castle, involves 13 ghosts and 13 frightened girls, both black and white. Uh, 13 ghosts is from 1960. It's great reviews. I've actually seen, I've seen this one, 13 ghosts. I enjoyed it. Uh, if you've not seen it, you should check it out. And uh, let's see. 13 Frightened Girls, black and white, from 1963. It's a comedy thriller. It only gets so-so reviews, but uh, I'm, that's why I picked it up. I wanted to check that one out. So a couple William Castle. 13 Ghosts says, When an eccentric uncle wills a huge ramsack, rams, ramsackle house to his impoverished family, they get the shock of a lifetime. Their new residence comes complete with a spooky housekeeper, plus a fortune in buried treasure and 13 terrifying ghosts. Good movie. Really, it is. Pretty good. And uh, 13 Frightened Girls says, The girls of a Swiss, Swiss boarding school have one thing in common. They are all daughters of diplomats. One in particular finds out that she has a knack for espionage and uncovers the murder of a Russian diplomat. Now she must escape using her girlish wiles. Okay. The back. Let me see if I can get that close enough where you can see it. And the next one is pernicious. 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 I can't say that word. Pernicious. Pernicious. 2013, 93 minutes, not rated. It's a horror thriller. It gets so-so reviews. This is kind of, a, reminds me from what I've read, it's kind of a hostile-like film. Um, three beautiful, young, beautiful girls arrive in Thailand to teach English for the summer. None are prepared for the terrors that await them. The girls find themselves in a nightmare situation when new friends go missing. Bloody dreams haunt their sleep. And a stolen statue leads them down a dark path into Thai folklore and magic long forgotten. Oh, sounds interesting. You can read the back. Doesn't look like it's showing up great. I apologize for that. Okay, next up. You'll know immediately why I got this one. Dracula in Vegas. Not rated. 1999. 63 minutes long. It's great reviews. This looks to me just a, a cheesy, fun movie. And I do mean cheesy, so in the best way. Dracula in Vegas. Necking, necking will never be the same. It's Alf Wiedersehen, Alf Wiedersehen, goodbye, hello, Alf, it's Alf Wiedersehen, Germany, hello Las Vegas, when young vampire Max makes the University of Nevada his college of choice. Not only does the school offer great academic courses, the campus is teeming with beautiful young ladies and an ample blood supply. Oh. Can't wait to watch that. <laughs> There's the back. You can read the rest if you'd like. This looks like just great cheesy fun to me. Anything with the Las Vegas name in it, I buy it. I, you know, I have a collection of all, only Las Vegas stuff. Here's a double feature. Blu-ray, Last House on Massacre Street and Wild Little Bunch. Last House on Massacre Streets from 1973. It's a PG film. It's 85 minutes long. It's also known as The Bride. It gets so-so reviews. It's a psycho thriller. And Wild Little Bunch is 105 minutes long from 1973. Drama. Uh, this is put out by Code Red. It's about uh, the <clears throat> Wild Little Bunch is about a lady that's raising 14 children in a poor working class England, falling sick and the children try to carry on as a family. 
doesn't sound scary, but maybe for her it was. There were, okay, so Little House on Massacre Street says the neurotic and newlywed Barbara finds her husband in bed with his old flame, Eva. Robin doesn't get mad, she gets even, using funds supplied by her wealthy daddy. The scorned bride turns Robert's and Sar Saraxini's love nest into a dungeon, dungeon of horror. Okay, stars John Beale. There's the back. All right, another vampire film here, it looks like, called Blood Rain. Not too, this one doesn't get great reviews, but uh, it's R-rated, 79 minutes, action film. It actually gets terrible reviews, I guess. <laughs> it's about Nazis and vampires, so, okay. Let's see, Blood Rain delivers nonstop action and incredible special effects. Christiana Laken, Laken or Loken, Christiana, Christiana Loken stars as a sexy, sexy killing machine determined to use her supernatural fighting skills to combat her father and his menacing vampire army. All right, next up. Holiday Horrors, Holiday Horrors Triple Feature, excuse me. Here is way too long, you guys. We have a triple feature, Paranormal Halloween, Deadly Xmas, Deadly Xmas, and Summer Camp Massacre. Paranormal Halloweens from 2015, not rated. 90 minutes, comedy horror. Most of these films, I think about 70% of these things I got are comedy horrors. That's, that's really not my favorite kind of horror, but, uh, you know, that's what's what was available, right? So, uh, let's see. Yeah, comedy horror, and it gets so-so reviews. Caesar and Otto. This, oh yeah, that's right. These three are all con uh, concerning these, these two brothers. Caesar and Otto, and their antics, I guess. Um, the first one was actually Summer Camp Massacre, and you may recognize someone in there, right here. That's right, that's Felissa Rose, in kind of a sleepaway camp ripoff, maybe. As you, were, as you guys recall, I have an autograph uh, thing here from Felissa Rose, from Sleepaway Camp, where she played Angela. I enjoyed the heck out of that film. Let me know down below if you what you thought of it. If you guys have seen any of these, by the way, feel free to comment down below and tell me what you thought of them, or if you've seen any of them, let me know what you thought. So anyway, so Summer Camp Massacre was the first one, Deadly Xmas was the second one, and then this Paranormal Halloween was the third one with, uh, with Caesar and Otto. going to read all of that. Let's let you guys check it out. I'm, I'm ex especially going to watch this one. I, the, I'm going to watch the Summer Camp Massacre first. So that looks like fun. With Felissa Rose. Next up, Wild Eye, Raw and Extreme. All he needs is nine lives. Cat Sick Blues. Heard of this one, but I've never seen it. It's not rated. 101 minutes from 2015. It's put out by Wild Eye. It's really good reviews. Evidently, it's very gory. When Ted's beloved cat dies, it causes a mental breakdown. Now he believes that the only way to bring back his pet is taking the lives of nine humans. Oh, no. Evidently, that's very gory. Next up 
a film by Casper Ju. Excuse me. Madness of Many. Madness of Many. 73 minutes long from 2013. Gets so-so reviews. Evidently, this is a hard movie to watch. Very wild and gory. At least that's what the reviews say. The film depicts the psychological journey of a young woman named Victoria. Since her childhood, she has been sexually abused by her family. One day, she decides to escape, but the world is against her, and she soon finds herself cast into an inferno, torture, and punishment. Into an inferno, torture, and punishment. Hmm. This causes her unimaginable suffering, but she also comes to understand the true meaning of her existence. Yeah. Madness of many. Next up. Now this one I have, I believe, but I did not have it on Blu-ray, so I picked it up. It's called The Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, 2017, 86 minutes long. This is a Satanism possession film. It's so-so reviews. It has a cult following, and it's very graphic, from what the reviews say. Lots of extras on this one also. Mary witnesses the brutal suicide of her father. His death unleashes the savage forces of demonic possession in his daughter. The end of days is upon the world. Famine, drought. The Catholic Church is trying to save an innocent soul from the ravages of satanic possession. The Song of Solomon. Next. <clears throat> now, this is called American Guinea Pig. There was a guinea pig series done in Japan that was quite a, quite, quite um, gory also. But, uh, so they kind of ripped that off, or maybe this just a continuation. But this is American Guinea Pig, Bloodsuck. Blood Shock. Blood Suck. Blood Shock. <laughs> 91 minutes long, 2015. Looks kind of creepy to me. Look at that. A man finds himself trapped and used for medical experiments in an abandoned mental facility. It's got me right there. He doesn't understand why or how he got there. But the surgical tortures allow him to experience a new level of pain, sadness, and reality he has never felt before. Sounds interesting. We shall see. And next up is a creepy looking cover too. Children shouldn't play with dead things. Not rated, 1972, 87 minutes long. Kind of a spoof on the Walking Dead movies, you know, uh, Evil Dead and all of those. I can't read the back of this. Way too small. Led by Alan, a mean-spirited director, a theater troupe travels to beat by boat, excuse me, to a small island for buried criminals. Using a... Alan begins a seance to raise the dead. Doesn't sound like a good idea to me. All right. Newly restored, all new film transfer. If you guys have seen this one, let me know what you thought. All right. Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. 96 minutes long, 1981, not rated. It gets really good reviews. It's a revenge film, right up my alley. I love the revenge films. When young Mar Lee Williams is found viciously mauled, all hell breaks loose in her small rural town. Officious postmaster leads a gang of bigots in pursuit of the suspect, her mentally challenged friend Bubba. Finding him hiding inside a scarecrow, 
They exact brutal mob justice only to discover a tragic mistake. Now, a strange apparition stalks the land seeking each of them out as the legend of the scarecrow begins. That one sounds like fun. Let me know if you have seen that one. Now, this one I have seen. I did not have it on uh, Blu-ray, so glad to have it now on Blu-ray. The Unnameable. 76 minutes long, 1988, and it's not rated. Um, this is an upgrade, like I say. Said it's from uh, it's from a, a short story of H.P. Lovecraft. And her short story uh, concerning this was only seven pages long. I have read it. It's pretty good. It's really short. You ought to check it out if you haven't. The Unnameable, a gothic monster story. Gothic monster story. Hmm. Of course, Lovecraft also did uh, wrote Reanimator and From Beyond. Lots of special edition things going on there. All right. Next up. All right. The Lodgers. The Lodgers on Blu-ray. 92 minutes, R-rated, 2018. Irish Ghost Story. Yay, Irish! <laughs> yeah, that's from, uh, let's see. A sinister presence con confines orphan twins Rachel and Edward to their home and torments them as a punishment for their ancestors' sins. When Rachel falls in love with an outsider, she grows skeptical and begins to rebel, desperate to escape the oppression and misery of their family curse. This one looks kind of cool. If you guys have seen that, let me know. The Lodgers. Wow. Kind of a crazy title. But uh, I got this one from Amazon, I do believe. I did not get this from uh, um, Hamilton Book. Uncle Peckerhead. 97 minutes, horror comedy. It gets pretty good reviews. It's about a punk band and uh, what they go through, I guess. Um, yeah. Life on the Road proves unforgiving when a punk rock band, D.U.H., discover their roadie is a man-eating monster. Great fun and a must-see. A blood-soaked, ghastly time of a road movie. There you go. I believe most of the rest of these are from uh, MVD. Maybe not. <laughs> anyway, here's ABCs of Death. Most people have heard of this. 2013, 130 minutes long. Uh, it's basically a 26-chapter anthology. Evidently pretty gory in, in parts. I have not watched it, so I'm excited to watch this one. An alphabetical arsenal of destruction. We must see. Next up, Two Little Monsters, a film by David Schoemiller. Two Little Monsters. 107 minutes from 2014. It's not rated. Uh, loosely based on real and real English event or England event where a do, uh, two young 10 year olds kidnapped a two year old and, and killed him basically set him on a railroad track and watched him die so this sounds interesting and hopefully it's uh, hopefully it's okay let me know if you've seen it down below next up bloody birthday Bloody Birthday, 85 Minutes, 1981, R-rated. It's pretty good reviews. So it's another one of those psychopathic kid movies. So I'm in for psychopathic kids. In 1970, three children were born during the height of a total eclipse of Saturn, the planet governing emotion. Ten years later, these seemingly innocent children 
have become heartless killers, able to move around under the radar, radar of suspicion because of their youthful facades. What happens when a teenage girl and her younger brother stumble upon the horrible truth? Sounds good. Oh, and we got a the Ripper Blood Pack. Tom Savini in Ripper. Like Tom Savini. Uh, let's see, The Ripper is 1986, not rated. Doesn't get very good reviews. It's 102 minutes long, but it, I do like Tom Savini, like I said. Blood Cult is from 1985, not rated, 89 minutes. Another not very good reviews. Evidently, he's got really poor acting. And Revenge. This is the reason I picked this up, because I like my revenge films. 1986, not rated, 110 minutes long. A sequel to Blood Cult. So Revenge is a secret sequel to this movie. So I guess I'm going to have to watch uh, Blood Cult first. Okay. Next one from the Wild Eye, Raw and Extreme, is Fang Boner. Fang Boner. Not rated, 90 minutes long, 2015 comedy horror. Gets pretty good reviews. Don't know what to think of this one. But evidently it's about uh, these folks that turn into uh, kind of vampires and the only way they can survive is sucking blood out of people's groin area. No neck involved, the, the groin, so. Okay, these sluts have bite. Meet Dick and Susie. Dick becomes infected with an unknown virus and in turn infects Susie. They soon discover that they have a few found they have a newfound taste for blood. Oh man. Crazy, crazy stuff. Let me know if you guys have seen that one. Next, I think this is kind of a ripoff from I Spit on Your Grave, but uh, this is the official director's version of I Spit on Your Corpse, I Piss on Your Grave. Children look away. 2007 horror it's crappy reviews this was evidently shot in eight days in germany okay sam uh, sandy has stumbled onto a lair of torture and humiliation abducted and taken to this pit of pain as the next intended victim sandy overthrows her captors and kills him okay You guys seen I Spit on Your Grave? Whew. Hell of a revenge film. The End is Here. Apocalypse Cult is the next one. 2017, 84 minutes long, not rated. It's so-so reviews. It's an Australian film. It's basically found footage and evidently is quite creepy. Never Enter Their World. While investigating the legend of a mysterious group of religious people living in the forest, a local news crew becomes trapped in the grasp of, the doom, of a doomsday cult who are about to execute their final act of devotion and biblical punishment. Wild Eye releasing also. Right. So my last one, my last pickup for this week was a clown movie. Clown Kill. Clown Kill. Not rated, 2016, 79 minutes. Evidently, nobody likes this one. I'm going to have to give it a watch, and it probably won't make my now tipped over shelf. Anyway, it gets terrible reviews. A group of employees at a small business lock themselves in their office building for the weekend in order to catch up on some important deadlines. But little do they know, they have also locked in a sadistic killer clown who has plans of his own for the weekend festivities and is seeking bloody revenge against the company members who must band together to survive the weekend. Looks like fun, maybe. Probably won't make the show. Anyway, that's it, you guys. I hope you found maybe found something there you might be interested in yourself and uh, want to go out and pick it up. So, hey, again, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the old fool. 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So, next video is probably going to be, let's see, this is thir uh, Wednesday. Probably going to be Saturday or Sunday, an Amazon and uh, Walmart haul video. And I'm going to be giving away quite a few goodies in that one. So, stay tuned. And again, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, keep smiling, keep having fun, and keep that positive attitude. Until next time, peace.